I think it exceeded in many ways my expectations in that I didn't expect it to be such a kind of huge industry, I suppose is the best way to describe it here, but something that clearly has made an impact and they're conducting research at the moment to, to consider the extent of that impact and to, to validate their conjecture that it does make an increase of 10 to 10 to 20 percent difference in terms of, of students' results uh, at the same time as equipping leaders which, with really good leadership skills, much more confidence, greater presentational skills, um, greater drive in terms of what they look for in, the, in terms of their next steps in terms of graduate schools. I think the thing that has really struck me is that this can't be done on a shoestring. Coming in and thinking here is a means by which we can get more support for students in terms of adding to their ability to comprehend what's going on in large lectures. Instead, I appreciate that there needs to be a really, really clear administrative structure, clear quality assurance procedures, and somebody coordinating who's got a sound understanding of pedagogy. But I think at a time when in the UK we're looking at the issue of contact hours and I think particularly for the de, de Gibbs conjecture where he's actually done sufficient analysis to say it isn't an increase in contact hours that we need um, from the academics. I think this is a really supportive means of offering a voluntary activity in which if students want some greater assistance in kind of decoding what has come out of lectures or some, some added support and a friendly face in terms of somebody who might be able to support them. PLTL is a good way of doing that. I think also in terms of continuity, the leaders have undertaken these programs themselves to understand what, where the difficulties might lie in terms of students understanding certain concepts or issues and also are presenting in different ways but it's also giving the leaders because they're taught in pedagogy, they're given um, experience, they're given space to be able to test in terms of the, the, the program that they've got to undertake it gives them a chance to, to add value, I think, in terms of helping deepen the language and move to much more um, deeper understanding of issues and concepts looked at in, in uh, the, the lecture series. I think it is a, certainly an investment on the part of a university. Somewhere like here, it's 10 years on. Um, the, the money to, to support this has come through the use of, of lab fees because they get the experienced leaders then becoming lab instructors so that's next natural progression for them so they're not actually paying staff for running the, the the labs they're getting students to do that with groups of sorry the student leaders being the instructors of groups of four and encouraging teamwork and team learning there which I, I similarly think is impressive uh, transferability to the UK well I'd like to explore it more in terms of hearing I understand that the University of Rochester uses PLTL to support PBL in medical, um, the medical curriculum. I'd like to speak to more people in Britain about it, things that are, are maybe similar but perhaps not quite so rigorous as, as this whole project seems to be. So more exploration to be done and I think the conference in May is going to be a wonderful opportunity for people globally to be able to share ideas, share experiences and look at how using students to be co-producers in knowledge, which this really is about, is an exciting development that I think we can all learn from.